Hello, hello, hello. This is Attorney Mike Gravelin coming to you from Chicago as usual. And today I got a fun one. Again, I've I've been over on the Depp Herd trial. Let's got one more week to go. One more week. And then uh then we'll then we'll get back to some normal stuff. But I've been I've been kind of trying to slide in some uh some late live streams uh to, to make up for it because that's well it's the only time slot I have available. But uh, a bunch of people sent me this clip. It's it's our good friend Judge Middleton over in three B, and uh, somebody comes rolling in there with a motion to disqualify. He is not happy about it. I haven't actually seen it all. I let it record. I, that, that's how short a time I am. I, I let it record while I was doing something else. So uh, this is kind of. I mean, I saw a minute or two of it, but I didn't see. I didn't see all of it. Um, so th th this is kind of my first reaction for what for what that's worth uh, of of this situation. I, I do get the general sense that a guy files a motion to disqualify and the judge doesn't like it. I know that much. Um, but uh, it, it, you know, among the many people who sent this to me, one of them said, uh, "Hey, you got to check out three B because some guy pulled a Blandino." Okay, I couldn't help myself. I, I missed I missed the old uh, Kim Blandino dance. <laughs> Thank you, Denise. That's awesome. <laughs> ah, I'm enjoying that all over again. I've, I haven't dusted that one off for a month or so. It's it, it's quality. It really is. Uh, I'll give one more shout out to Kick for that because I just I just went and shamelessly swiped it off his channel in the middle of the uh, Kim Blandino <laughs> hysteria. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get this party started. Let, 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 let. There we go. The defendant's request and the plaintiffs and the defendant waive the right to have jury trial, so I've blocked out the entire day of trial in this matter. Uh, Attorney Harold Welch is here from Legal Aid of Western Michigan on behalf of the defendant Robin Short. Ms. Short, would you come up and have a seat? Mr. Nicholas Spiegel is here on behalf of Enchanted Glen Apartments. As I stated, the file number here is 211563LP. I, I love the name of the apartments, Enchanted Glen. You, you know it's anything but Enchanted. <laughs> and I didn't even realize this till now. So I was wondering if it, if it was pro se, but it sounds like there are attorneys on both sides of this. So it looks like the defense attorney brought this motion. We had a very annoying uh, squeaky fan back there in the ventilation system. It's driving me nuts. And the... Uh, custodial maintenance staff fixed it. So I'm very happy today. It's the first time in some time I have spoiled. Um, at any rate, the matter is set for trial today. Yesterday, well, two days ago, I got defendant's motion in limine. And then yesterday, sometime in the afternoon, I received the defendant's motion to disqualify the trial judge in brief and support and plaintiff's response to defendant's motion to disqualify the trial judge. So we have to certainly address that matter first. I'll give a little background, I'm not under oath, but I'll give background as to what happened or what transpired. Uh, this matter has been set for trial today for some time. And uh, it was set for trial once before and it, maybe a couple of yes. times before, but at least once before, and it was adjourned because of conflicts with attorney's trial schedules. Um, 
We learned yesterday, I don't know, late in the morning or early in the afternoon, that there had been a fire at Enchanted Glen Apartments. I think someone called down from the prosecutor's office and said, did you know there was a fire there yesterday? Your Honor? Yes? Could I interrupt briefly? Um, I have a concern about possible witnesses uh, being in the courtroom while we address some things. Would you invoke the rule of sequestration? Yes, Certainly, that's uh, probably appropriate. Everybody who's here as a witness, uh, I'm gonna, I'll let the manager stay, but everybody else in the defendant can say, would you please wait out in the hallway? All right, this comes up a lot, and I, we got a lot of questions on it during the Depp Heard trial. So uh, you, you, wanna, you want to exclude witnesses. You, what you do is called a motion to exclude witnesses. So the purpose for that is you don't want uh, witnesses listening to other witnesses' testimony and changing their testimony as it goes. Uh, this motion has brought a skosh early if, to my way of thinking, although the judge granted it and said, fine. Now, it really is a matter of course. It's not even like a, a disputed issue. But, uh, you know, the judge was just sort of giving some background right there. I, I guess, arguably, you don't want the witnesses to hear that. So that, that's all that happened. Thank you, Eric. Uh, I figured we'd get to that at some point, but I didn't know if we'd get to this. But there's no harm in it. <clears throat> other than they got to sit on a different part. <laughs> um, at any rate, uh, we had heard that there was a fire. They called my secretary and she said, did you hear there was a fire there? And I said, no. So we looked to see if there were any news reports about it and they weren't. So the magistrate, uh, Mark Trowbridge, who works for me, was on the phone with Chief Mark Brinkert from the uh, Cohen Police Department. And he asked Chief Brinker, was there a fire at Enchanted Glen? And well, someone said the whole the place burned. And I said, well, it didn't all burn down. There's a number of separate buildings there. So anyway, he asked Chief Brinker, was there a fire there? And uh, I want to know how, how uh, Judge Middleton's uh, familiar with the Enchanted Glen. Brinker said, yes. <laughs> and... Um, and he said, well, what unit was it in? And he informed uh, the magistrate that it was at 470 unit 36, which is the unit that's an issue here. Um, he told the magistrate. What, what are the odds that uh, Judge Middleton's had a meth charge emanating out of that unit recently? There was no power, and he did not believe the apartment was habitable. <laughs> And so I, in a very poorly typed email, I sent a message to both counsel, <clears throat> left some words out. I sent it at 10.24, I guess it was late in the morning. Uh, it isn't certainly written very well. I'm advised by the chief of police of Colon that there should have said was a fire in Robin Short's apartment number 36 last night, and it is presently unlivable. And I sent that to Mr. Spiegel and to Mr. Welch. Uh, uh, he's so good. I mean, he's in this small town where no one's watching. Well, except for everybody on a lot of talk with Mike. But but the rest of the world doesn't care what's going on in, in St. Joseph County. And he is, like, so on top of it. He he documents all this stuff, and he's transparent on the bench. He he he, he discloses all the communication. And all it was is overhearing something that anybody in town would have heard. Then, sometime later in the day, we got Mr. Welch's motion to disqualify so, uh, Mr. Welch, after putting the premises from my perspective on the record, do you wish to speak further to your motion? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Um, and we, we wish to underline in no way, shape, or form are we indicating the court uh, intentionally did anything improper. Um, our concern is with, uh, of course, the, uh, the appearance of impropriety. And this is an unusual situation since Your Honor is the trier of fact. If this was a jury trial, uh, perhaps those conversations would have been um, completely harmless or not not raising the possible specter of uh, disqualification. 
Um, so, you know, as I, as I view the canon and preparing my motion and uh, considering what happened, um, my conclusion was that the rules are not to get us as close to the line as possible. In other words, but the rule is to keep it far from the line. So um, the appearance of impropriety or ex parte conversations, um, you know, that's where we're at. The conversation happened. Uh, we don't think Your Honor uh, purposely tried to investigate the case, but it is complicated since Your Honor is the prior fact. Well, why is it relevant? Why is it relevant? Well, I, as Mr. Spiegel said, okay. I sent it out as a, okay. do we still need to have this lengthy hearing in light of the fact there was a fire there? Yeah. Uh, why is it relevant that I know there was a fire there? Okay, well, uh, it's, what if I read it in the newspaper? It's an ex parte communication um, that you had knowledge of. Somebody gave you not only the fact that there was a fire, but description of the severity of the fire. And, uh, uh, and therefore, you know, we, we need to have an impartial trial fan who doesn't have the specter of, of possible uh, problems. Why is the fact that there was a fire there relevant to their effort to terminate the tenure? I, I can't believe an attorney brought this motion. I really can't believe an attorney brought this motion in a small town where you only have a few judges. I, wow. I, that, that is not a good basis. He's respectful about it. I will give him that. But it is simply not a sufficient basis for this motion. And a, a, an obvious delay tactic to the point of bordering on sanctions kind of stuff. Well, they intend, they intend to bring that into court in evidence, is my understanding. Now, they, they haven't alleged that that is a ground for termination, but it is part of their case. And well, the whole thing shaking his head, no. How do you know that they intend to do that? Okay, well, I, from what he said in his response to the motion, I think. Um, the, the thing is, Your Honor, we have to avoid the appearance of impropriety. Your Honor is not a public citizen. There's no appearance of impropriety. Ooh. Ooh. If I had one of my associates come to me and, and, and suggest this, I would say, we're not doing that. I'm not putting my signature on that awful, awful idea. Listen, where you could have conversations with anybody about anything, uh, about cases that are pending in court. As trier of fact, uh, you know, it's just wise to avoid the appearance, okay, to, to not get close to the line and say, yeah, you've had information about that. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a good question, Patrick. Does he think he'll get a fairer judge? Uh, I don't know all of St. Joseph County, but but my my top suspect is that you get Judge Stutzman, who, who's, who's a fine guy, but not nearly as nice as Judge Middleton. <laughs> but okay. This case, but you're still going to be the trier of fact. That's not in, you know, bringing forth confidence in the judicial system that we avoid any appearance of impropriety. It's not that you did anything a problem, but it's the appearance of impropriety. And an ex parte communication about facts of the case has... Well, I guess he's just saying uh, uh, communication about facts of the case outside of the presence. It, do, it does strain the definition. That's a, real, that's a really sophisticated question, by the way. Uh, thanks for asking it. But, uh, the, I, you know, really what you're worried about in an ex parte communication primarily is that you're, you're speaking to one of the parties outside of the, of the presence of another party. Not that you're living in a community where you happen to catch wind of news. That, that is not what, what we're worried about. It's tainted the situation, Your Honor. So we would respectfully ask that you... Um, that you disqualify yourself, and uh, uh, now I want to I want to address one thing. Uh, counsel on the other side mentioned I didn't attach an affidavit. Well, affidavits are for people who have personal knowledge who can testify. I don't have personal knowledge, so there is no affidavit apparent needed in this motion. Um, and if your honor denies, okay, okay. So there's the difference between a, an attorney and a soft sit. When an attorney discusses an affidavit, he actually knows what he's talking about. Now, he's brought a bad motion, <laughs> but he is familiar with the concept of an affidavit, and he didn't attempt an affidavit of truth. It's our motion that we would ask that um, the motion be referred to another judge in the district court.
uh, for a de novo hearing on the motion to disqualify. Mr. Spiegel? Yes, Your Honor. Um, I guess I'll address that last part first. The, I didn't write the rule. The rule says must. It doesn't say you can possibly, you can permissibly attach an affidavit. It says you must. They didn't. Um, but let's get down to the substance. I think, I think Your Honor has it exactly right. Uh, we're not here today to terminate Ms. Schwartz's tenancy because there was a fire on Monday. Uh, this drama has been, I think we filed this back in September, October of last year. Um, we had, I think, our first hearing in December, I believe, if I remember correctly. Uh, this has been going on a while. The fire on Monday is not why we're here to terminate Ms. Schwartz's tenancy. Uh, to Mr. Welch's uh, representation of the court that we intend to make it a relevant part of our case, so I told Mr. Welch and what I intend to do today, that to the extent the fire matters at all is simply background for the rationale of why some of our maintenance people were there on Monday and what they observed about Ms. Schwartz's apartment that would have had nothing to do with the fire. Uh, they're going to offer some testimony. I'll, I'll make an offer of proof that, in fact, they had seen that the uh, fire detectors, the smoke detectors, were all disconnected her in her apartment, which has nothing to do with the fire. The fire didn't do that. That's something Ms. Short did. Um, but the fire is simply to say, why were they in there on Monday? That's why they were in there on Monday. Other than that, the fire doesn't mean anything for this case. Uh, and I disagree. The fire was on Tuesday, correct? Or was it? I thought it was, was it Monday or Tuesday? No, Tuesday morning? Okay, Tuesday okay, morning, sorry. The fire, they were Tuesday there on morning. Monday and the fire right. was Tuesday. Right. I'm, so they were there on Tuesday. No, I, I misspoke. I, I think no. There was the motion Monday, and, and again, oh, there's been a flurry of motions last year. So the fire was yesterday. They come in yesterday, they see that. That's the only reason we're going to talk about the fire at all, is to say that's why they were there. Other than that, the existence or non-existence of the fire doesn't matter for this case. I disagree that there's been any opportunity to take communication. You didn't communicate with uh, yep. My party didn't communicate with Mr. Welch's party. Uh, you didn't communicate with a witness. Uh, as far as I understand, no one's calling the Chief of Police for Cologne down here to testify about anything today. So to be frank, as I told Mr. Welch on the phone, I disagree with the motion because this, to me, sounds like more kicking up dust to kick the can down the road. Ms. Short's already been in this apartment now for something like eight months after this thing was filed. Uh, we need a resolution. Uh, the tenants need a resolution. Um, and, and yet, more delay, more delay, more delay. So, uh, th th this attorney Smooth, uh, he 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 hits the nail on the head on on all fronts here. This is obviously just a delay tactic. We don't have an ex parte communi communication. We don't have an appearance of impropriety. We have someone who they filed a termination of tenancy on in the fall. Couldn't get them out because they filed a jury demand, and and they're just d delaying this. This is really kind of sleazy stuff you're entitled to file a jury you're you're entitled to to do lots of things and assert your rights but attempting to disqualify the judge here is on the edge your honor i don't think there's any reason to grant the motion i don't think there's any reason uh to continue the delay uh we should have the trial today if mr welsh wants the motion referred i guess to somebody else i think we can take the findings of that we have to come back another day because another judge feels differently i suppose we can do that but i disagree that uh we should have to reset now the trial yet again <clears throat> recalling that there was an original contract i think back in march which was one of our witnesses to be fair um over something that's a red herring. I mean, for lack of a better term. There, nothing that you heard that there was a fire matters today's trial. If I offer that as some type of evidence that she needs to be evicted, I expect Mr. Welch will say objection relevance. Mr. Spiegel told us that was not why she was going to be evicted, and you would sustain such an objection. That's it. Uh, you heard about something that isn't going to determine about this case. I, I haven't been down here in a year or two, but I, I often recall times where you will call something about a witness or a defendant. Um, it's a small town. I understand that. But I don't think that's ever, to my view, uh, impinged on your ability to make a reasoned and impartial decision. So I, I don't think this motion is necessary uh, to be granted, and I'm kind of surprised it was brought, to be honest. Thank you. Oh, yeah. You, respond, Your Honor. you can get sanctioned for filing a... Uh... Uh, oh, first of all, well, Your Honor, the reason there's been no delays is because plaintiff requested an adjournment, uh, which I granted as a courtesy, as a professional courtesy, as an attorney should for the administration of justice. But I also wanted to call Your, your Honor's attention to MCR 2.03 um, D, as in Douglas 3. Um, 
in a single judge court or if a challenge judge is the chief judge, which I understand your honor is the chief judge, on the request of a party, the challenge judge shall refer the motion to the state court administrator for assignment to another judge who shall decide the motion de novo. So if you are inclined to deny our motion uh, for disqualification, we would respectfully ask that you um, that you refer this to the state court administrator for assignment to another judge. I don't think I have any uh, choice in that part of the matter. But first of all, let me back up. I'm offended by this motion. Uh, you tell you tell him, Judge. So am I. I'm surprised he was that upfront about it. But good. Personally, I find it as a personal insult to me. Uh, but um, I'm denying the motion. A. I don't think any of the communication was improper. I set out the circumstances of what happened. B. It was relevant to me as to whether we're going to have an all-day or two-day trial on this matter on an apartment that apparently has burned, and I don't know to what extent it's burned. Secondly, if we go through the proceeding and the defendant is subject to termination of tenancy, she loses her right to probably find another subsidized housing uh, and the ability to get such an apartment as she has. So if the apartment burned, and the defendant decided we didn't need to go through this hearing, she wouldn't end up with a termination of tenancy on her record, reason for leaving last residence, the apartment burned. Translation, you are a crappy, crappy attorney, and you're not even helping your client, but in a very, very nice Judge Middleton sort of way. So relevant to her. <laughs> um, I'm also concerned that this case has been very delayed. The plaintiff asked uh, to have the matter heard. The defendant filed a demand for jury trial. We have not had a jury trial on a landlord-tenant case in 50 years in St. Joseph County. Because of the demand for jury, this case was delayed and delayed because at one point we weren't able to conduct any jurors, and then it took precedence over criminal cases, so it's a difficult time to find a place to put this on a jury day. So I set it for a jury trial, and Mr. Spiegel had a conflict with another court, and he requested an adjournment, which you graciously granted. Uh, but that's the only delay that's been up to them. So then I had to find another jury day to put it on, and then you waive jury. Um, so much of the delay was because of the defendant's demand for a jury trial and all the legal issues that have come up in the matter. Uh, so regarding the motion to disqualify, the court rule cited by both parties is 2.003. Maybe uh, I can make one for members. Yeah. For I think that's what you're trying to say. 2.003C1. Disqualification of a judge is warranted for reasons that include, but are not limited to, the following. The judge is biased or prejudiced for or against a party or attorney. That's an OSG reference. The judge is biased on objective and reasonable perceptions that either have a serious risk of actual bias impacting the due process rights of a party or has failed to adhere to the appearance of impropriety standard, which he's referring to the code of judicial conduct. <laughs> the judge has personal knowledge regarding the disputed evidentiary facts that concern the proceeding. I, don't know I do the know there was a is. fire there. I probably would have known if I'd listened to the Sturgis radio on my drive in this morning. I don't know the extent of the fire. I don't know the cause of the fire. Um, the judge has been consulted or employed as an attorney in the matter in controversy. No. The judge was a partner of a party. No. The judge knows that he or she is individually a fiduciary. No. And then the others. So it's under, I guess, B. Uh, appearance of impropriety and C, the judge has personal knowledge of disputed evidentiary facts. Um, well, I didn't know the specific, although it sounds like Illinois. I mean, whatever, whatever it's going to be similar in every state. But, 
But boy, boy is he irritated. He pulls out the code and reads the whole darn thing uh, to, to make sure that his ruling is clear. For example, let's say I talked to Chief Brinker and said, well, I was out there when there was a great big party at Robin Short's house, and I had to get everybody out of there, and uh, children were there, and it was a terrible situation. That might be relevant. Uh, I've had no such conversation, probably no such thing took place. But the fact that I heard secondhand that there was a fire in the defendant's apartment from Chief Brinker, I do not believe, raises the standard of impropriety. Particularly because, as Mr. Spiegel says, it's not relevant to all the allegations of violation of the lease. Yes, this is absolutely relevant. It's a termination of tenancy because they haven't been paying rent. And they haven't been paying for rent long before last fall when, the, when this action was filed. The fact that they coincidentally had a fire in the complex last Tuesday is absolutely irrelevant to, to, the, to the case before them. Absolutely irrelevant. And, and then the judge happened to hear about it because he lives in the community, like probably 98% of the people who live in the community. Uh, if we have to move this, it's going to be difficult again to schedule it. All the witnesses are here. Uh, people are prepared, although I get a motion to eliminate two days before the trial. It's been pending for seven months. Um, and we've blocked out the time. Um, defendant, current rent is zero. So we had contemplated an escrow order, but there's no effect to an escrow order when her rent is none. Uh, so the delay. This, this is really despicable. It is just a pure delay tactic, as was the jury demand. But that's well within their rights. You got to find a time and have a jury. But they just, they happen to hit everything right. They've got COVID and they file a jury. And, and now we're going to try to do this all so that someone doesn't have to pay rent. I don't know who's putting their license behind this sort of thing, but it, it's not a good look. Certainly in order to the defendant. The plaintiff wants the defendant out. They wanted her out since they filed the matter in the fall of last year. They've continued to want her out up to and including today. And uh, all the delays are to her benefit. She continues to stay there against their wishes without paying any rent. So uh, my desire would be to hear the case today. I don't know the extent of the fire or what the condition of the apartment is. Um, Let's say a meteor hit it and the whole place was disintegrated, and then I guess there'd be no need for a termination of tenancy hearing. But I don't know what the status of the matter is. I am not the chief judge. I'm the presiding judge of 3B District Court. Judge Pattison is the chief judge. I was the chief judge for many years and alternate that position. So Judge Pattison is here. I'm going to see if he can hear your request for a de novo hearing on the motion to disqualify uh that that um that rehearing that de novo rehearing and the motion to disqualify in front of judge stutzman is not going anywhere it wouldn't go anywhere in front of say judge simpson it wouldn't go any anywhere in front of in front of uh lanice bryant uh, I, I mean i could go down the list uh judge gothier would not having it well everybody's here uh, that may not be feasible, but I'm going to see if he can hear your motion de novo right now. So uh, your motion to disqualify is denied. And okay, so he's denying his motion, and he's going to try to give it to Stutzman, like, immediately. L look at the position they put him in. Uh, the, the, the plaintiff, they brought all, all these witnesses. This, this is irritating. I don't believe there's any appearance of impropriety, and I don't have, believe I have any personal knowledge of disputed evidentiary facts. So I will stop the record and turn off the live feed and uh, go see Judge Pat. 
Well, there you have it. Everybody sent that to me. I, I really did think that was pretty interesting. Uh, that that's one where you might have uh, accidentally learned something. Not from me. Maybe maybe from Judge Middleton reading the code. Uh, I thought it was pretty interesting. You got to see him really set forth the, the idea of a motion to disqualify. Uh, it, it, you know, I haven't looked it up in, in Illinois. You know, in Illinois, this happens all the time when we get uh, sent out to, especially on jury, because we'll, we'll go in a pool. You can take a substitution of judge as a matter of right. Like you, we, we, we just get a substitution of judge motion ready because if we just don't like the trial judge that we're in front of, we think that they're not going to call it straight. We just hit them with a substitution of judge and, they, and you don't have to give any basis. Just you get one free. That's that simple. Uh, once a judge in Illinois, and this is probably true in every state, but it just happens to be where I practice. Once a judge has made a substantive ruling on a case, you cannot take a substitution of judges as a matter of right. Then you have to, sh it has to be for cause. You have to show something. So, um, you know, th th and that's very close to this. I, I think here, I don't know if he's made a substantive ruling because all he's done is scheduling. Th that would be a, an interesting fight in and of itself. But he chose to say that because uh, Judge Middleton's court was actually contacted, not him. And he hears secondhand that there was a fire in town, which is just something Judge Middleton would know. Because, you know. That's that's what Judge Middleton does, um, you, you know that that that's some some form of impropriety. I would not sign that motion. As an officer of the court, I would say I am not sending this motion to anybody who suggested I do such a thing. I, I'm just not comfortable. That doesn't make sense. I I, ne I need a proper basis, and I sure not going to do it. In a, in a small county that I practice in, that it, that's only got uh, a handful of judges, because when you offend one judge in the county, uh, that's one thing. You can get away with this stuff in Cook County. There's a bunch of them. They don't like each other. The whole thing, you know, the whole shoot and match. A small county, there's like you might have four or five judges, and they all know each other. It's a small club, and they generally like each other at that point, because just because they don't have a choice. Because they have to work together. So uh, it, it, that's just a poor decision on all fronts. And I don't know what the financial incentive is to, for that. You've got someone who hasn't paid their rent for ever. They're not a good client. They're not paying you. It's, it's not like... Uh, it's not like you're getting rich on this representation. Why are you putting your license and reputation on the line for this sort of thing? I, I don't understand it. I didn't even name the attorney. I don't know the attorney. It was, it was a guy. Aside from the fact that this, this um, motion had no basis, he otherwise seemed really sharp, which makes it even worse. He sort of softened it. I, th I, th I liked his presentation to the judge, aside from the fact that the motion was meritless. Aside from that, he seemed to know the law and and it was well spoken, uh, respectful, all that all that business. It was it, that was a weird one. It, it was very interesting, and I apologize um, if 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 any knowledge was gained here. Again, I did not mean that. I did not intend that, and I'll try not to let it happen again. Okay. I think I'm going to go over, uh, I'm not sure, but Natalie's got a stream going on. If it's still going, I think I'm going to hop on that. So if anyone's interested, I think I'm going to head over there. Have a good night. Oh, and thank you, Cheeky Fox.